Like You, Like Me is a picture book about pen pals who learn about each other's lives in the United States and Tanzania. Through their letters, they discover they have much in common. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Ahead, we'll explore the book and talk with the author-illustrator about the inspiration behind it to see if this is a book you'd like to add to your child's library. Jenny Sue Kostecki Shaw is an award-winning author and illustrator whose previous books include Papa Brings Me the World, Luna and Me, The True Story of a Girl Who Lived in a Tree to Save a Forest, My Travel and I, and Same, Same, But Different. She joins us to talk about her new picture book, Like You, Like Me. Jenny, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Thank you so much for having me. Well, tell us about the inspiration for this picture book. Well, um, the uh, inspiration for Like You, Like Me came from several different things, but uh, in essence, it came from my daughter, Tulsi, and her relationship with her pen pal, Vanessa, um, which I kept the names in the book. Um, They've been having a pen pal relationship for, I think, about four to five years now, and they started it during um, when I think when my daughter was about in fifth grade or fourth grade uh, during uh, homeschooling. So we, letter writing is a big part of our homeschooling and letter writing to, you know, family, cousins. Um, but also she asked if she could have a pen pal that she didn't know, someone who lived, you know, in a different place than her. So that's the journey how it began. So how did she find this pen pal? Well, I, as her, you know, as her mom and as her teacher, I just started emailing different friends. And I had a friend who is an international librarian and she travels to different schools in different countries every few years. And she put me in touch with her friend who is a librarian at the time, was a librarian um, in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. And so we started emailing back and forth and he said, I think I have someone who would like to be Tulsi's pen pal. So that's how it began. And the book is rooted in their connection and some uh, facts, you know, some things that they shared. And then from there, I've also explored different things and just used it as a, uh, a container really to ground the story. So tell us about the story. What what are readers going to find here? Sure. So they discover right away that um, they see in the first spread, they see both girls um, on their couches and they're writing. You can tell that they're writing letters. And it says, um, Tulsi says, it's so the whole story is written in their letters. Um, but as it goes, it feels a little bit more like a conversation, not like long letters. And um so the interesting thing is, is on the first page that I love is that they're on a couch that's connected. So um, you see that Tulsi's in her um, home and Vanessa's in her home, but they connect to make one couch. And you see out their windows, you can see Tulsi lives in the mountains and Vanessa lives um, by the sea somewhere. And so they begin to exchange. They just say, let's be pen pals. <laughs> and they're connected through their mutual friend librarian friend and it just they just dive into asking each other questions and sharing right away and they discover they have a lot in common they do yeah I, I think given that opportunity um, we can all find things that are we have in common with someone that we might not expect or maybe things that we the things that we do have in common are what's unexpected um, so the, and it was just similar to their relationship that it was inspired by. They, um, they just, they were both shy at first and then they jumped into asking questions just like the characters in the book. And they quickly discovered that they have, they have quite a few things in common and took so much joy in, uh, in, dis- in that fact. And then just soon just started opening up more and more. Jenny, would you read a small portion of the book for us? Yes, definitely, I'd love to. So there's a part in the book where they're sharing about their schools and how they go to school. And there's a lot of PS's in the book. And so Vanessa says, or she writes, P.S. During the rainy season, it rains and rains and rains. 
And Tulsi replies, It hardly rains here at all. When it does, I dash outside. I scurry inside and find a comfy nest. I love to read, especially funny books and books about outer space. Me too. I like books about animals and about friends, like you, like me. P.S. I'm a thing finder. Are you? Here's a flicker feather. I am. Once I scooped up a shark's tooth. Here's a magic shell. Make a wish. I wish I could soar like a red-tailed hawk. I wish I could race like a cheetah. Riding bikes might be the next best thing. I agree. Like you, like me. And that's just part of the book, Like You, Like Me. Jenny, you know, as the story goes on, they discover more and more things that they enjoy and, and have in common. Tell us a little bit more about how you put this book together. And I understand the, the parents of the pen pal were somehow involved with helping you get some of the details right? Um, yes. Well, so a lot of their relationship, they uh, my daughter and Vanessa, they would um, had began by writing letters that we would actually scan and email and then print out for them because it was it's a, it would take it too long um, to send by mail and in this case and um, then we did a lot of Zoom visits actually <laughs> and so the Zoom visits would take place at about nine or nine thirty New Mexico time and about seven a.m. Uh, Dar es Salaam time so uh, the librarian would host these and just kind of give them introductions and you know maybe some prompts to start sharing and then they would just take over and, and share things. Um, so the, a lot of um, things just came about from their conversations. Uh, and then in the end, when I just, like when I actually thought that I couldn't, that this would make a good book um, and I started playing with it, then I inquired with, um, through the librarian and Vanessa's father, who's actually a teacher at the school and asked him if, if he was okay with that, how he felt about it really. And then I asked, I had come up with other names at the time for the girls. And then I asked Vanessa, like, would you like your name in the book? And she was very excited. So then I just used those names and actually the using their real names in this circumstance gave me a lot of energy and helped, um, helped me as I was painting the book because, uh, it just brought more of them and their joy in the relationship, and it came into the artwork, I think. Well, as you well know, with many picture books, authors and illustrators work separately through an editor. But you are both author and illustrator, so do you feel like that gives you a creative advantage? Uh, I don't know if it's an advantage, but it certainly is. It's a, it's a really freeing thing to be able to... Um, move things around like a puzzle and and pivot. Like if something isn't quite working, um, I can change something. Like I had this, this was an interesting part, but the um, the place where they, uh, they're they sharing about music and Tulsi is sharing that she plays uh, the jug. She buzzes the jug. And I had originally had Vanessa dancing because Vanessa had shared with Tulsi how much she loves Tanzanian music, that that's her favorite. And I had her brother uh, drumming in the background. And that was maybe an assumption, right? That, that I had at the time that her brother would, the, the boy would be drumming. And then it was maybe a month or, or actually it was quite a bit later because I was actually getting into the painting phase, but I hadn't painted that spread. And sometimes I feel like I have intuition, like I'm not quite ready to paint this because I'm not sure that it's resolved or, what exactly I wanted to look like. And then it happened that Tulsi and Vanessa had a Zoom one night and Vanessa had a surprise that she played the drum for Tulsi and she had been taking lessons and she uh, she was just rocking out on the drum. And it was, it was such a joy to watch her and she was so, felt so, you know, happy and proud that she was, um, had learned this and was sharing it. And so I changed that spread entirely. I want to talk to you a little bit about sort of the nature of picture books because they are unique in that quite often they're read 
two children by adults. So there's sort of that adult audience as well as the child audience, because if an adult doesn't like the book, it's not going to get read because frequently you have to read it over and over and over again with the child. So it has to be something you enjoy. Do you kind of keep that in mind as well when you're creating your book that often there is going to be an adult reading it? Yes, I, I suppose I do because I I read to my children all the time. Every night I read picture books to them and throughout the day at times. Uh, and I, I mean, I know I'm biased because I love picture books, but I love when books have a rhythm, when they're just fun to read. I love finding things in the in the pictures. And actually, to tell you the truth, my children, they're the ones that usually point out that, you know, some of the details that I might miss. And then it brings about conversations. And it's really fun to discover new things that are like other layers of the story. And so uh, I try to do that in my books. And um, my son had a he had come in with a suggestion one day. He was very upset because I didn't include the dog and the cat in one of the spreads because they're in every spread. And he said, they have to be in the spread because we're going to want to find them. Every kid is going to want to find those, the, the dog and the cat. And so, um, so I put those, you know, made sure that they were in the, the, on those spreads. But I also love, oh, I'm sorry. I, I also love just the conversations that can come up by including other things in the the uh, pictures that aren't in the forefront that that can be of interest the other thing about picture books because i i i confess i like picture books as well is that it creates that special time between adult and child and i think it's so critical for childhood development for kids to have that experience together with the adult, reading the book, enjoying it, because it helps create that love of literature and the love of reading that is going to give them a firm foundation moving forward. Another thing I wanted to ask you about picture books is they're deceptively simple. I think a lot of people who have never written one will look at it and say, oh, that's simple. Anyone could do that. But in fact, it's not easy because you have just a limited number of words, limited number of pages, and it's like a, a novel in miniature. You have to have a beginning, a middle, of the end, etc. So tell us about the challenges of writing a children's book. Yes, I feel like a lot of ideas will come in, you know, to, to my head, at least I can speak for myself. Uh, and, but do they hold on? Like, do they um, as I'm moving throughout my days, I'll, I'll think about them. I'll, I'll just, it's sort of like a um, painting in my head, you know, I'm trying to figure out that story and can it hold up or does it have that um, beginning, middle and, and end? And is it something that you'll remember after you're done reading it? it will, will you carry it with you? Um, because I think some of the best children's books are ones that you do carry with you throughout your childhood. You'll read them again and you um, sometimes they're, things that you'll experience for the first time as a child through a book or through a story. And other times they, um, you'll be relating to them because you have experienced that. And so um, it is, it's very tricky to, to take the, an essence of an idea and, and put it into the form of the picture book. But that's what, that's why I love making them. I love seeing how, the the art and the story and the words can work together to tell something um, that one couldn't do by itself. I want to come back to something you said earlier. You noted that you are a homeschooler, and I'm curious about sort of the role that picture books might play in homeschooling from the very beginning about introducing that to kids, and also just your experience as a homeschooler and what advice you might have for others. Sure. Uh, well, books are a huge part of our of our homeschooling time. I mean, really, when you homeschool, it isn't like you're. Some people have an idea of what they think it looks like, and it probably looks nothing like that. Maybe in some circumstances, but um, it's not school replicated at home. At least for us, it's very much. Uh, it's just the way of life, and so it's like we do have some focused hours of school time. But it's really, it's all, all the hours, like all of our days together are, you know, opportunities 
for just connection. And I think one of my favorite quotes um, about our journey has been uh, connection versus collection. And so it doesn't matter how many things you know, like how many facts you collect. That's not really what it's about. It's about connection. So for me, it's about connection with my children. It's about connection with with a book, like really sinking into one story for a while um, or or for an afternoon if, if uh, they choose or connection to nature, just being outside and being present with each other and and giving space for my children to be present with whatever it is that's um, that's moving their heart at the time. Uh, and also, oh, I, I was going to say, um, also, when I was young, I had a really hard time learning to read. Um, and so picture books were a huge part of my connection to story, because although I had a hard time reading, I fell in love with the pictures and I fell in love with the story through the pictures. And so that carried me um, through to the time that I could read, uh, have, you know, read more fluently and, and better. So um, I think picture books are so powerful in so many ways. The book is Like You, Like Me by Jenny Sue Kostecki Shaw. Jenny, thank you for talking with me today. Thank you so much, Dan. If you'd like to purchase Like You, Like Me, I've placed a link for you in the description below. Well, thank you for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf. And if you'd like to see more videos about children's books and their authors, be sure to subscribe, like, and click on the bell to be notified about future programs. And if you're interested in books for young adult and older readers, be sure to check out my Some Books Considered channel, and you'll find a link for that below as well. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading.